In this video, we're going to look at two uses for the indirect function. The first use is to look up a cell on a different worksheet in the same workbook. And we're going to make a dynamic formula so it can be pulled down across the names of the actual sheets. And the second example we're going to look at is to build dependent drop downs using data validation. So let's have a look at our first example. And what we have here is we have product A, product B, and product C. And I have product C slightly different for a reason, which you'll see in a few minutes. So these three relate to the sheets in the workbook, product A, product B, and product C. And each sheet in this example only contains one value, and that's the sales value. And on each sheet, it's in cell B2. We can see it's in cell B2 for each sheet. So for that reason, I have put, for reference, I have put B2 into this cell here just so we can link to it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the indirect function to create a worksheet name and a cell and pull back the value. So let's have a look by putting in indirect and it's looking for the reference text. So the start of the reference text is going to be in cell A2 because that's product A. Now we need to turn this into a sheet reference. So we will join that with an apostrophe and we will close the inverted commas. And then we need to also join it to B2. So now we have made the name of the worksheet and we've joined it to the cell B2. Now this might say B1. But what it's actually doing is reading B2, the text B2, in cell B1 and combining it together to give you the value for product A. Now what we can do is we can fill this formula down. If I first lock in cell B1, and then we can actually fill this formula down and it'll work for product B and not product C. Now the reason it doesn't work for product C is because there's actually a space in the name. So what we need to do is we need to wrap this name in inverted commas. So we'll just activate the cell there, the formula there, and at the start of the formula, you're gonna put in inverted commas, you're gonna put in dash inverted commas, and an ampersand to join it. And after the ampersand, you're gonna put in the same again, quote, inverted comma, quote, and then another ampersand to join this to the quotation mark and then to the cell reference. And that is how you pull in a sheet name that has a space in it, you wrap it in quotes. Let's have a look at formula evaluation. If we go to formula and we go to evaluate formula, we can look at this one step at a time. So first of all, it's going to cell A2 and it's saying that that's product A. And now it's saying and join that to the apostrophe to give us the worksheet name. And now let's join that to B2 to give us the cell name. So now we have a reference product sheet, product A, cell B2, and it returns the value. For our second example, we want to be able to pick from a list of brands. And dependent on the list of brands that we select here, we want to be able to select a product. So we want to put in a drop down or data validation for the brand which will then give us an additional data validation for the product. I have a worksheet here named data, and this contains the brands, and then for each brand, it contains their particular products. So the first drop-down data validation is brand relates to these cells here. So we want to create a list from these cells here. So if we go to formula, and then define names create from selection. And the top row is going to be the name of our list. And this is creating a list. And when we create the list, it is stored in the name. So if we then to our formulas again and go to name manager, we'll see brand is now stored in there as a name manager. So we can go back here and in our green cell here, if we go to data, data validation and data validation. And we want to select a list. Now we have a name and our name is brand. So we can just select brand 
and say okay and now we can pull in each of our brands from our drop down list but now what we want to be able to do is pull in the relevant product relating to the brand and to do that we're going to use the indirect function but first we have to name all of our lists so our first list our Bico list formula create from selection select okay now that list isn't titled Bico Samsung because I have the first one highlighted create from selection top row and select okay and then LG again create from selection and select OK. Now if we go into our name manager we see we have Bico, we have brand, we have LG and we have Samsung and if we select any of them it'll bring us to that name. Next we need to add our drop down here to the product so if we go to data, data validation and again data validation and again we want a list and this time our source well we're going to start by putting in indirect and we're going to select a cell which is going to be the brand now remember this LG which is text in the cell is now actually a name of a list so we're actually referencing a name of a list in here by selecting cell B3 and we can hit enter and OK now we just get the products for LG. If we change this to Bico, we should get the products, the three products for Bico. And again, the same if we change it for Samsung, we will get the two products that we have available for Samsung. And that's how you use the indirect function with data validation to create drop downs that are actually dependable. What's really important is the lists and creating the lists and having the lists named correctly. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you want to post a comment below, don't forget to subscribe.